I think that we are caged by our cultural programming in, and that this is the most powerful imprisoning factor in our lives that if we could train ourselves simply to remember our dreams psychedelics would become obsolete if we could train ourselves simply to pay attention to our ordinary states of consciousness as we live through our days and nights uh, culture is a mass hallucination and when you step outside the mass hallucination, you see it for what it is uh, worth. Language is partially the key here. We cannot move into a reality that we cannot describe. If we can't describe a world, we can't be there. And so the interesting place to be is at the cutting edge of language. And it's interesting that the legacy of the 1960s is a legacy of language evolution. I mean, concepts like ego trip, vibe, uh, bummer, uh, so forth and so on. I mean, we sneer at these concepts, but there was no word for these things before. Once there is a word, then that word is like a stepping stone out into the fog. And as long as we let the establishment set the language agenda, we will be imprisoned in the tiny, rather pedestrian world of consumerism and schlocko values that the establishment has prepared for us. So the way I think of these psychedelics, or a different way, is that they're catalysts for the imagination catalysts to say what has never been said, to see what has never been seen, to draw, paint, sing, sculpt, dance, and act what has never before been done, to push the envelope of creativity and language. And what's really important is, I call it the felt presence of direct experience which is a fancy term, which just simply means we have to stop consuming our culture. We have to create culture. Don't watch TV. Don't read magazines. Don't even listen to NPR. Create your own road show. The, the, the nexus of space and time where you are now is the most immediate sector of your universe. And if you're worrying about Michael Jackson or Bill Clinton or somebody else, then you are disempowered. You're giving it all away to icons, icons which are maintained by an electronic media so that, you know, you, can, you want to dress like X or have lips like Y or something. This is, this is shit-brained, this kind of thinking. That is all cultural diversion. And what is real is you and your friends and your uh, associations, your highs, your orgasms, your hopes, your plans, your fears. And we're, we're told, no, we're unimportant, we're peripheral, get a degree, get a job, get a this, get a that, and then you're a player. You don't even want to play in that game. You want to reclaim your mind and get it out of the hands of the cultural engineers who want to turn you into a half-baked moron consuming all this trash that's being manufactured out of the bones of a dying world. Where is that at? Yeah, over here. <laughs> 